Hi, I'm Lise from Lisa's Crafty Creations and I thought today I'd do a, a, a little getting to know you video, just a short one, tell you some of the funny stories that has happened to me over um, my life. Now, first of all, I'll tell you what I'm working on, which is the Snow Leopard from Easy Whim. It was in the um, February subscription box. It's a lovely little picture. It's coming up really nice. I'm having some problems with the symbols, but I'll talk about that when I do an actual review. I'm also using my Diamond Art Club pen. I have a six placer in the top and obviously a single placer. Um, I am using my Amazon large diamond paint and tray with um, a funnel. I have my tweezers here that I got from a kit ages ago they're the nice pointy tweezers um and i think that's everything what i thought i'd do today i've got my coffee obviously because you know i've got to have my cup of coffee at hand what i thought i'd do t today is just tell you a couple of the, the funny stories that have happened to me um since especially since moving to um the north yorkshire area well i'm from um newcastle as i said so i'm a bit of a geordie Although I was on the Durham border, so um, I was about a half an hour from Newcastle. Um, so, and we lived, on, but we lived on the Weir rather than on the Tyne, in a little place called Chesley Street. It was a lovely town, loved it. Um, it had everything on your doorstep. You could go down into town, as we called it, Chesley Street. We called down the street. We used to go down the street, and we could get. Anything was handy. We had the council officers so you could go and pay your poll tax. Um, we had the police station in the town. We had um, shops, all kinds of different shops. We had a Woolworths at the time, um, co-op, um, boys, all those kinds of shops. We had loads of them. And they were all at hand. So you could just buy by about buy anything you wanted in the town, the, the street, down the street, as we called it in Chesley Street. Now, the town we referred to as Newcastle. It's just one of the little idiosyncrasies. So if we're going down the street, we were going in Chesley Street. And if we were going to the town, we were going to Newcastle. Um, but that's by the by. So I'm, I'm from, that's where I'm originally from. So... Coming here, the we we are from, or Jeremy's family is from a farming background, so they seem to have a language of their own. Um, they're very open. They'll talk about nearly just about anything, which I wasn't used to. And as I say, I was a, I was I was only um, I was married at twenty one, um, and we courted for a total of eighteen months. Um, so I was about. Nine, between 19 and 20 I would say and um, when I first came and met the family now there's quite it's quite a big family John had about eight or nine brothers and sisters um, a lot of them were still around so you know it was quite quite a chore going around all these different family members but there was one particular aunt, well, two aunts, they owned an old people's home. So we used to go up to the old people's home and see them there. So Jeremy took me up to meet them. Now, at the time, there was Auntie Molly, Auntie Maggie, Uncle Abe and Ken. Um, not that I saw much of Ken, I very didn't really meet him. But Uncle Abe I met, uh, he wasn't very well and he was at the home a lot he lived he practically lived at the home well so did auntie molly working there she was always there she was very 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 industrious lady still is and um <laughs> so we were talking and now now jeremy warned me beforehand that that uncle abe was difficult to understand or, or i would probably find him difficult to understand because he had a strong yorkshire accent but I was reassured that the main things he talked about were his garden, his bees, and his hatred of cats. 
Um, now, he hated cats because they used to dig up his garden all the time, which was his pride and joy. So anything that interfered with that, he didn't like. So he, he, he really hated cats with a vengeance. And um, so I was expecting this, this little old man, because that's what he was very frail at the time. He had cancer. Um, and he was this little old, sweet old gentleman and he was lovely he was very nice but as i say he came from a farming background now i was sat talking to him and jeremy was talking to his auntie molly now he was telling me started telling me this this what well, i was talking away to me and i'm okay right that's lovely well apparently he was telling me all about his testicle cancer so he's saying that everything was hard and it was painful and I'm going, oh, that's nice, lovely. And um, it's the size of a blood orange, right? That's lovely, that's nice. Um, and it's really painful. Oh, lovely, that's smashing. I bet you like that. That was great. And I'm like, totally oblivious to what he's telling me jeremy in the mid background is talking away to his auntie molly and he suddenly catches on to what uncle abe's telling me and he looks at my reaction and he hears me going he hears uncle abe saying it's so painful and i turn around and say lovely that's nice <laughs> and and Jeremy just looks at me and then, then he realises what's happening that I don't, I'm not understanding and he starts to laugh. And Auntie Molly's doing the same. She's realised this conversation. And then she sees the glint in Jeremy's eye and it twigs with her what's happening. So they're sat in the background giggling away. And I'm oblivious. I, I, I mean, I have no idea what they're laughing at. And um, I keep looking at him. Jeremy questioningly as if to say what? what what are you laughing at and Uncle Abe's continuing telling me how painful everything is and what he's going through and that he has to have this operation and he has to have that and I'm going lovely nice oh that's great pretending to be really enthusiastic about what he's telling me and and he needed something completely different to that <laughs> but I just didn't understand a word he was saying. So I came out of the home and um, Jeremy said, did you understand anything that Uncle Abe was saying? I said, no, I didn't have a clue. I says, what was he talking about? And he said, he was telling you how painful and how hard um, it was having testicle cancer and how everything was um, as big as a blood orange and... Um, as, as hard as a corgi or something like that and um and he says and you're going oh that's nice lovely i was like oh no why didn't you tell me he said it was just so funny i thought i'd let you get on with it i said what are they gonna say he must think i'm the horriblest person and he's going <laughs> he's going oh, auntie molly understood she'd explain and I'm saying that's besides the point. I says you told me all he talk about with his with his was his garden. I says and he what's he doing talking to me about his testicle cancer? I'm just I I mean I'm just a young. What why is he telling me all about it? He don't talk about things like that. And Jeremy's just absolutely killing himself laughing. I'm mortified. At what's gone on? And Jeremy thinks it's hilarious. Well, he, the first thing he did over what got through the door was what? Tell his dad. Well, his dad, being a proper joker and um, somebody who understood that kind of thing and how funny it was, um, absolutely nearly wet himself laughing about the whole situation. And I was just cringing. I was so like, what are these people going to think of me? Instead of me saying, I'm sorry, I don't understand what you're saying, I'm just going, oh, that's lovely, nice. <sighs> yes. So whenever there's a talk about ac accents or not understanding what somebody's saying, then the story comes out 
then get aired to everybody and anything. And um, mind at least it's a funny story. It's one I mean I tell it, tell it a lot myself, but ah oh dear, I was I can't, I came away when I found out, and I was just so embarrassed about the fact that I'd been telling this old man how nice it was for him to have testicle cancer. I was mortified. Anyway, that's just the start of some of the stories. The um, Another time, it was when I'd had my daughter, my first baby I'd had, and I was breastfeeding her. And um, she was got a bit whingy. She was ready for a feed. She got a bit whingy. And um, so, you know, I changed her nappy and got her settled and I was getting myself ready. And then all of a sudden, Jeremy comes in, not Jeremy, John, Jeremy's dad, my father-in-law, came in. And he said to me, what's up with her? Give us some pap. And I, like, looked at him. Pap? Pap? Why would I want her to? I says, I've already changed her nappy. He says, no, give her some pap. And I'm thinking... What on earth is he talking about? The last thing I want to give my baby is pap. Because where I came from, pap meant poo. Go and have a pap or go and have a poo. Well, I'm like, what's he talking about? Give us some pap. Why on earth is there something wrong with this man? What planet's he on? I'm like, and I'm like, so I said to Jeremy, what on earth is he talking about? He's telling you to feed her, give us some milk. And I'm like... What? That's not what that means where I come from. And he's like, well, what does it mean for you? He says, I'm saying, he's telling me to give her some poo. Why the devil am I? And I'm sat there thinking, why the hell should I give her some poo? What on earth are you talking about, man? Oh, dear, I was like. And then when he when he realised that I'd, what I thought he'd said and what he'd actually said, oh, well, that's another story we can't live down. And I mind, I let John, I tell that story. As I was like, what on earth is he talking about, this man? Is he on this planet? Give us some pap. Oh, well, then he said the same thing to my sister. <laughs> and I knew what it was, so I'm starting to laugh. Julie was, like, disgusted. What on earth is this man? And because he knew that that's what we thought it was, she was even more upset and annoyed. Fancy him saying that to me, knowing what we believe, what we think and... Why didn't he, doesn't he just that, use that word? That's such a coarse word. And, oh, dear. So, but, so now, like, he'll say it to me, give them some pap or give them a drink. And, um, all the time now, because he knows that that's, um, well, he knows that I understand now, but it's, it's like a standing joke that we can laugh about. It's a good job, you know. I mean, we've got a good relationship with my father-in-law. He's, he's really, he's a lovely, lovely man. Um, But, yeah, he likes to take the mick. Um, he likes to have a joke. And he's caught me out a few times. He'll say, he used to, like, ring us up on the landline. And um, he would ask a question that would need to go... And he, he would go to go, and he'll go, he's still on the line. And we'll be like, yeah. He says, well, you better get off, there's a train coming. <laughs> and I caught the amount of times he's caught me out saying that. But we, we're we cottoned on to it now. So we'll say, no, no, we've gotten off the line because there's a train coming. And he just laughs and stickers in the background because he knows we've caught him out. And he hasn't, it hasn't worked at this, oh, such, such a laugh. But anyway, there's a couple of little antidotes about the fact that I didn't understand anybody. Um, mind it worked both ways. There was times that they didn't understand me. Um, but many a time Heather would say to John, John, she's not understanding the word you're saying. She's look at her, she's just glazed over. She can't, she's totally confused. And she'd have a little laugh and, and John would then slow down and he would then tell me what he was talking about. But, um, you know, many a time I sat there and I was just alienated in some ways because I didn't understand what they were talking about when there was a few of them together. And as well, because they talked so fast. Well, well, you do, don't you? When you're around people who understand you and family, you just, 
yachu. I mean, I tend to talk really fast, um, which is something I do on my vi I might do on my video. So please, if you're finding that I'm rambling or that I'm talking too fast, please let me know in the comments, and I'll try my best to slow down a little bit. Um. So that is some of the short stories. I will leave it at that. Love you and leave you. Pass on a smile if you get the opportunity to. And I'll see you next time, probably to do a review of this painting. Bye.